today we're going to be talking about genetic traits and natural selection. We're just going to review what we talked about yesterday. Um, we're going to look at our key vocabulary that we filled in our tip chart yesterday. We're going to take a look at Charles Darwin and his Galapagos finches that we looked at yesterday. And we're going to see how genetic traits and natural selection work together. Okay? So, to review what we did yesterday, let's very quickly get out our interactive notebooks. And with our elbow partner, let's um, jot down on page 123 in our interactive notebooks what we already know about Charles Darwin and natural selection. So I'm going to give you guys about two or three minutes to talk with your elbow partner and look at what we learned yesterday about Charles Darwin and natural selection using our natural selection graphic organizers. We should be talking with our elbow partners about what we learn about natural selection. Right. So we're looking at you know, Charles Darwin had our four main parts of natural selection, right? So we have overproduction and we have the variation, struggle to survive, and successful reproduction. So those are our four parts. Okay, so that's what we're going to be kind of looking at right here. Okay? Finches. The finches, okay? He looked at the finches. And who can kind of tell me a little bit about natural selection? What does that kind of mean, natural selection? Michelle? It's the driving force of evolution. Right, it's the driving force of evolution. Okay, and that's what we talked about yesterday. We really went over our key vocabulary words, and today we're going to take those key vocabulary words like natural selection, um, environmental resources, and we're going to look at how that affects evolution, okay? All right, so before we dive into that, let's go ahead and look at our language objectives and our content objectives for the day. So I'm going to read them, and you guys are just going to repeat after me, okay? So for our content objectives, we have students will be able to describe how traits and environmental factors help a species survive. You guys repeat after me. Students, 
perfect. Our language objectives we're going to look at, we're going to be listening, speaking, reading, and writing today. So students will be able to restate examples of natural selection by talking with a partner. So repeat after me. Students will be able to restate examples of natural selection by talking with a partner. Perfect. Okay. For speaking, we're going to be describing natural selection. So students will be able to describe natural selection orally by using sentence frames. Repeat. Students will be able to describe natural selection orally by using sentence frames. Perfect. Okay, for reading, we're going to be identifying key vocabulary words. So we're going to, students will be able to identify key vocabulary words. Students will be able to identify key vocabulary words. Perfect. For writing, we actually have two things we're going to be doing. Okay, we're going to be providing feedback to our peers, and we're going to be writing sentences about natural selection. So students will be able to provide feedback to their peers by using sentence frames. Students will be able to provide feedback to their peers by using sentence frames. Perfect. And then students will be able to write two sentences about natural selection by using a word bank. Students will be able to write two sentences about natural selection by using a word bank. Awesome. So let's look up here about what we're learning today. So today we're going to be describing how traits and environmental factors help a species survive. How are we learning it? We're going to be doing two activities, a four corners activity and a paper toss. How am I going to know that I learned it? We're going to know that we learned it because we're going to be able to write two sentences about natural selection. And I have our language objectives over there on the board so that we can kind of reflect on those throughout the lesson, okay? All right, so let's review our key vocabulary. Our key vocabulary we looked at yesterday was natural selection, species, environment, genetic traits, and adaptation. These are those words that we wrote down on page 106 and 107 in our tip chart in our interactive notebook. So to review that, we're going to be doing a activity called Four Corners. So let's look at our instructions, and then we're going to get into our groups. Okay? So, three instructions we're going to look at first. We're going to get with our activity partner. I will give you a key vocabulary word and a piece of chart paper. And then you're going to wait, wait quietly for more directions. Okay? Cole, can you repeat what we're going to be doing? We're going to get with our activity partner, and then each group will get a key vocabulary word and chart paper, and then we wait for you to give us more directions. Perfect. Why don't we go ahead and stand with our activity partners and go to each of the five tables. We're just a 
dividing into four sections, and we're going to title our sections, just like we have up on the board. doing a good job. Those are doing a good job. from my tip chart, remember we're looking at pages 106 and 107, that the definition of the sun is that the sun is the star at the center of the solar system. I draw a nice big picture of the sun, and then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use the sun in a sentence. The sun is the main source of energy for life on Earth. Okay, so we're going to use our key vocabulary words, and we're just going to quickly do our four corners activity. Okay, so let's get started with our key vocabulary word. If you need markers and colored pencils, they're up on the front of the table. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We good? Gabby are dividing and conquering. That's a good strategy to use. One of them is doing the sentence and one of them is doing the definition. drawings. I gave you guys uh, sticky notes because we're about to do a gallery walk. So let's do about one minute to finish up our coloring and then we're going to move into our gallery walk. Make sure that your chart is out so that people can see. 
Okay, we are going to stand up and walk around to different charts. But before we stand up, let's go over what we're going to write on our sticky notes that I gave you. Okay? So you are going to add comments to people's charts um, about their key vocabulary word. Okay, so I have two sentences for you guys to choose from. We can either write, we agree with your picture, definition, or sentence because. So we need to have a, a because here. Okay, another idea for a picture, definition, or sentence would be. Okay, so we're doing our descriptions. We're trying to explain um, based on our key vocabulary words. Okay, so let's stand up and we're going to rotate to the table to the left of you and then add a comment using your sticky notes. You guys are going to write the Alright, right here. Alright, we're going to look and we're going to use our sentence stems. vocabulary, we did our gallery walk, we reviewed the words we looked at yesterday. We're now going to take our vocabulary and kind of see where it is in natural selection. How does it play a role in natural selection? Okay, so who remembers our moths, our peppered moths? Who remembers talking about our peppered moths? Nichelle, do you want to tell us about our peppered moths? Yeah, during the like, kind of like revolution, um, the trees either turned black or white. So either the black moths or the white moths would blend in. And right, so after the Industrial Revolution, what was the Industrial Revolution? Do you guys remember? We, we talked about it, Cole. The mechanical advancement. Right, so there was mechanical advancement in England that they used coal, and that coal turned our trees black in England. Okay, um, so the what happened then to the white pepper moths once our trees turned black? What happened to them, Ava? Um, their population went down. Right, their population went down. Okay, their population went down. Why? Nichelle? Because they were able to be seen because they were white and couldn't blend in. Right, they couldn't blend into the, the trees anymore. They didn't fit into the trees, so they were easily seen by birds. Okay, so their population went down. What happened to the black pepper moths? Oh, Pedro? They, like, their population, like, increased. Right, their population increased because they could hide better on the tree. Okay, that color, what can we call that color? What would be a scientific word to call that pepper moth color or that black color? What do you think? A what, Pedro? Camouflage. Okay, camouflage would be a great word. Okay, what about some of our key vocabulary words we just looked at? What would be um, a word that we could say? Just like if we have blue eyes, we have brown hair, Eden. A trait. Good job, Eden. So that, tr the, that coloring of the moths is a trait. Okay, and so we're going to look at what role do traits have in natural selection. Okay? Um, and to do that, we're going to look at bird beaks, okay? Bird beaks are a type of trait. So I have three birds up here, okay? Why do you think each bird beak has a different shape? Why would bird beaks have a different shape? Cole? Because they adapt to the environment and some beaks aren't suited for different environments. Okay, some beaks aren't suited for different environments. I like how you use the word adapted from our key vocabulary. Let's quickly talk with our elbow partner about why each bird has a specific beak. Why would each bird have a specific beak? Okay, talk very quickly. They need to survive. 
God said to God, I have to be all right, do we think we have a good answer on why after what Paul had said? Okay, you can tell me, Ava. Um, we think that the birds who had the shorter beaks, maybe um, for food, they couldn't get the food. Okay, so possibly we have different beak choices because of different food. Okay, we find our different foods in our environment. Those are our different environmental factors, right? So we have our different bird beaks kind of maybe based on a food source. Okay, what other things do you think birds use beaks for? Gabby? The woodpecker uses beaks to make holes in it. Right, so the bird, the woodpecker might use his beak to get into the tree, okay? So there are lots of different ways that birds use beaks, okay? They're used for eating, grooming, moving things, killing their prey, and feeding their young. So for lots of different things, okay? So, do we remember talking about Charles Darwin and his finches? Where did he see his finches? Can somebody tell me, Nicelli? The Galapagos Islands, and what did he notice about those finches? Okay, what did they look like? Did they, were they all the same? No. no. Okay, they were not all the same. So looking at our chart, we have six different types of finches here. Okay, our chart tells us the beak shape. It tells us the name of the finch. It tells us the main food source. The feeding adaptation, meaning what type of beak does it have, okay, and the habitat it lives in, all right? The Galapagos Islands, was each island the same? No, what was kind of different about the islands? What did the islands have that were different, Cole? Food sources. Food sources, okay, and maybe what else? What else do you think, maybe, looking at our chart? Habitat? The habitat, okay? The habitats of where they live. Okay, so we have these different finches that eat different things. This vegetarian tree finch eats fruit, while this cactus ground finch eats ca uh, cacti. Okay, so let's look at some, some questions on how we can look at this chart. Okay, so what is an example of a trait in this chart? What trait are we looking at? Pedro? The beak shape, okay? Each bird has a different beak. Why do these finches eat different foods? Why would they eat different foods, Nichelle? They don't really have an option of it. It's just like what they can find. It's what they can find in their what? Habitat. Their habitat, their environment, okay? They have different food sources because they live in different environments, okay? So let's quickly talk with our elbow partner using this information. How could the beak trait help these birds survive in natural selection? Okay, so talk quickly with your elbow partner about that. So we should be looking at maybe our different environments or different food sources. Alright, thumbs up if we're ready to share. Are we good or do we need some more time? Are you good? Awesome. Okay, so who can share what they talked about with their elbow partner on this? Nichelle? Um, for the cactus grown finish, we said that maybe it can pick up the spines or the juice inside the cactus with its beak. Okay, so we see that the cactus ground finch kind of has a longer beak, right? So maybe that's used, just like Nichelle said, to get into the cactus because those spines are going to be hurtful, right? So it needs a longer beak to kind of get in there. So that's a trait that helps it survive in its what? Habitat. Its habitat or environment, right. 
okay? All right, so using our key vocabulary word, we're going to do an activity using our prompt, which is in our blue box, okay? So everybody, let's get out a sheet of paper. Just a sheet of notebook paper. All right. So on our notebook paper, we are going to write two reasons why traits help an organism survive. Okay, if I am asking for two reasons, how many sentences do, am I asking for, Devin? Two. I'm asking for two sentences. Okay, and to, you, to answer this prompt, we're going to use our sentence stem that traits help an organism survive because. Okay, I have our key vocabulary words up there for you guys to use in your sentences. So how many sentences are we writing? Can somebody answer that for me? Two. Devin? Two. Two, okay? And we need to be using our key vocabulary. So you're gonna write two sentences and then we're gonna pause and we're gonna um, do our paper toss activity. So now what we're gonna do is do our paper toss. So let's look at our instruction, okay? You're going to crumple up your sheet of paper into a little ball. And you're just going to put it in the middle of your table. Okay, so let's crumple it up and put it in the middle of the table. Awesome. All right, so um, when we do our activity, we're going to stand up. One person is going to pick a paper ball at a time. That person's going to open it up. That person's going to read the sentence out loud, okay? Then another person at the table is going to repeat the two reasons that that person wrote about natural selection, saying, I think I heard you say blank. Is that correct? Once that has happened, you guys will lay out the sheet of paper because I'm going to collect them. And then once everybody has gone, we're going to sit down so that we know that we've gone. Are we good? Awesome. All right. Let's get started. You guys can stand up. studied the finches on the Galapagos, Galapagos Islands and saw they had different beaks at every island. Okay. Talking with a partner, that's what we did with our paper toss activity. 
okay, where somebody read a sentence out loud and the other person repeated it back. We describe natural selection orally by using sentence frames. We've been doing that throughout with our think, pair, share. We, for reading, identify key vocabulary words. For writing, we provide feedback to our peers about our chart papers and our key vocabulary words by using sentence stems. We wrote two sentences about natural selections by using our word bank of our key words. Okay? So, we got about four more minutes left in class, so we're going to quickly do our exit ticket. Okay, so our emoji exit ticket, I'm going to hand you one. You're going to write down three vocabulary words that you learned today. You're going to circle the emoji about how you feel about the content objective on natural selection, and then you're going to tell me why. Okay, so you're going to complete this, and you're going to hand it to me as you walk out the door. Okay? You guys go. Thank you. You're welcome.